Hopefully you got the uh, faulty reference, of course referring to that connection on the VFX SD, the uh, predecessor uh, to this particular model from Insonic, the SD1. Uh, 30 years old now, uh, still uh, stood the test of time in my humble opinion. It's a great synth program if you like programming synthesizers. Uh, the main differences between the uh, VFX SD and this particular model uh, I'll probably put up on the screen, but in short, uh, there's an extra ROM bank, uh, there's three new effects uh, settings, and uh, there's 27 new waveforms, uh, including some 808 samples, which is interesting. And I'll try to feature those as, as I go along. Uh, basically, it's the exact same architecture as the VFX and the VFX SD. Uh, all the controls are right here. This is the programming section, as you can see. Uh, there's multiple pages, and then each of these becomes a soft button for each parameter you just adjust the parameter here so it's page parameter adjust page parameter adjust and some settings like filter and i would have multiple pages just tap again takes it to the next page i think the most you ever go is three pages deep so you're not menu diving on this thing you really do get around fantastic sequencer great midi control uh the splits and layers for performing the sequencer's 12 track uh, there's cool things a little bit ahead of its time. There's a group edit. Uh, you can actually stack up to six uh, waveforms, uh, digital waveforms, where you can stack six of them and have each waveform going through the programming section. So it's like each waveform is its own little synth. And uh, what's cool about it is you've got these patch select buttons over here, uh, which allow you to mute and solo uh, any combination of those six synths. Uh, so, for example, if I press a button here, I get one of the one of the six synths. Press this one. I have that one plus another one. Uh, press two together. I get another combination. Let go, and I've got, I think I can check actually, I've got all five. I've got five waveforms on this since now. That was a mono setting, um, so you can get some great uh, synthesizer uh, sounds. Uh, the Ensonic were famous for their uh, trans waves, which are single cycle waveforms all strung together. There's about 100 or, or more all stuck together, and you scroll backwards and forwards through them. There was no resonance on the filters. I think that was something um, that a lot of people uh, point out. Uh, but of course, it's a good thing, isn't it? Because it means you just have to buy more synthesizers. So this was their way of uh, getting around the lack of resonance was to uh, have a... So I'm actually scrolling, I'm actually scrolling through those trans waves and uh, this, this machine has 15 modulators and they plug in at various points in the programming, including the effects and of course, include, including scrolling through those trans waves. Uh, you can have an LFO, you can have the start point modulated by velocity, uh, the wheels. And this one, uh, I've got uh, one of the envelopes on repeat mode because they, they do that and it's just repeating. So it's just repeating, like scanning through the waveform backwards and forwards. You can start at the end and go backwards. You can start in the middle and go, and it's just amazing. And uh, I'll put up on the screen how many trans waves there are. Uh, it can also get very, uh, very mean, very ugly. Uh, 
Uh, it can also get uh, quite mellow. So, uh, actually, there's a filter you, on the... I'm going to be spending a little bit of time going through the sounds because there's just so much that this machine does. So this will be for the diehards or the people who may be interested in buying one. Um, I know a lot of the vintage, this is 30 years old, so it's vintage, right? Uh, a lot of the vintage synths, um, the prices have really skyrocketed and you're left wondering, you know, is it really worth it? Uh, I think I just checked on eBay, it's June 3rd, uh, 2021, and they were going for like 500, I saw some sold. This is the 21 voice version, important to point out. There's a 32 voice and they tend to go for a bit more, uh, but I've been playing with this one for you know, a month now. And uh, the, the 21 Voices is, is just great for, for what you need. Uh, but if you really want to go all out, then by all means, uh, spring for the 32. But they do get um, more expensive. Uh, here's another Transwave pad. Uh, this one uses uh, two voices, uh, which halves the polyphony. So I get 10, 10 voice polyphony, so I can play up to 10 notes at once. So uh, let's see what this sounds like. And there you can hear it scrolling through those those trans waves. Uh, the voice for that, by the way, that was uh, one of the resonant trans wave, which again is about 100 or maybe more uh, single cycle waveforms. And they're all slightly different. And so you can kind of emulate a resonance and then use uh, one of the modulators to scroll backwards and forwards through the through the trans wave. Uh, going back to uh, settings, uh, the other thing you can do is you can delay the voices. They don't have to start at once. Uh, as I demonstrated earlier, they can be monophonic uh, or they can be uh, layered as their own separate synthesizers and it can be split. Uh, or each voice can be delayed and I'm gonna use, uh, you'll get this example where the voices come in one after the other. So what I was doing there was just muting whichever arpeggio I want. There's your major seven, uh, minor seventh, minor seventh, uh, minor, minor with a major seventh. Yeah, you get the idea. So that's kind of fun. And of course, each wave has been detuned to you can create whatever arpeggios uh, you want to and then just delay uh, the entries uh, as you can do on the delay setting. Uh, you just go to select voice. Uh, we want the, this uh, one of the piano sounds, you hit wave and there's a delay top right. It'll tell you how you and it'll literally just play the voice 
uh, however many milliseconds uh, after. It's not timed in to tempo or anything like that. You just have to use use your lug holes. Uh, you can reverse patches, and then you can also get uh, a patch to play on the key up. Uh, so this is a three voice marimba with a reverse, a regular, and then a key up. Which is really fun to try to, to, try to play in time. Like the faster you play, anyway. Just a bit of fun, uh, just to demonstrate uh, some of those features. Uh, it can sound uh, quite creepy. I'm just going to check that was a two voice. So that was a 10 note polyphony pad there uh, that you can get to make it sound, you know, quite creepy. So I would say if you're into sound design or you're working on film projects or you want just something a little different in your music, this can go from that cool lead sound to the to the creepy stuff. Uh, one of the new sets of waveforms on, on the SD-1 was electric piano. Um, it's not, not the greatest. But again, not bad. You know, you can find ways to use it. Um, nice little harpsichord, which demonstrates the the plate reverb. The effects on this are really not bad, considering how old they are. You get the idea. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the other uh, set of waveforms that was new, they spent a whole megabyte, which is a big deal 30 years ago, on a piano patch. It, again, it hasn't really worn well over time, so I've used one of the new effects, which is phase with reverb. sequencer uh, again you can put all kinds of grooves in here it's great for practicing great for jams and uh, that just gives you a small idea of uh, you know that that's the new piano patch that the VFX and the VFX SD uh, don't have uh, moving on uh, to this bank uh, we've got a nice little uh, poly synth <laughs>
have to check my level to make sure I didn't distort. Might have distorted on that one. Um, I'll do. I'll do another take just to demonstrate. <laughs> Yeah, well, I might have to cut that out. <laughs> I got a bit carried away there. Anyway, uh, so moving on, uh, here's a much more elegant, uh, elegant sound. This is again the piano, but I've laid it with some strings in fifths. <laughs> Again, plenty of uh, polyphony uh, to go around. Uh, there's a kind of a, another string setting. Uh, the strings are not bad, actually. Little bit met metallic at the end of the reverb there but you know probably by now you've got better reverbs um, but again not bad you know to get you started uh, if you want uh, some strings uh, here's a bunch of stuff on here some silly horns and things but the usual uh, the piccolo is not bad And that's actually just one piccolo, and I use the flanger to kind of make it uh, sound uh, more uh, more voices. So that, again, there's all kinds of tricks you can use uh, to make it uh, appear that you're using more uh, waves than you actually are. So I'm just going to check. Yeah, that's just a single wave, and it's the flanger that's uh, doubling it, basically. Uh, moving on. Uh, oh, this is uh, one of the uh, new presets uh, in the, the ROM. Uh, it's the one that I picked out that I seem to like. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. It's very nice. I, I'd probably just use it. Uh, I'd probably just use it as a lead, uh, but still not bad. Uh, I like that. Uh, that's one of the uh, new ROM sounds. Uh, moving on, we have another lead synth. Again, you could just sit here, you know, forever, uh, just playing stuff like that. Uh, there's a bunch of bass sounds. Uh, I don't actually use these, but they're here. Uh, you might see some review. Might see some reviews that say the bottom end isn't so great. There's that 
vo uh, velocity switching uh, going on. Uh, yeah, I hope my, hope my levels are okay. I did a sound check beforehand, but then you get carried away, don't you? Uh, more bass? Uh -huh, more bass. Again, might not be your, your cup of tea, what you're looking for. Uh, so moving on, um, we have uh, a nice little, uh, uh, some good vocal patches. Well, synth vocals, you know. Another nice thing I like about this synth is you can split or divide or stretch the octave however you want. So you can... So when you play octaves, you, you don't get octaves. Uh, this is one voice, so I can play a 21 note. Uh, is it Leggetti who did that uh, choral piece for... 2001, you know. sit and play that for five minutes and uh, and really kind of get lost in it but yeah a great way to do experimental harmonies uh, if you want to just kind of get out of the whole diatonic chromatic scale this will let you do it uh, it also has a, a, you can actually program a custom tuning for each patch if you wanted to go through you could actually create a unique tuning it will rob two of the voices it'll take voice five and six and it will uh, use that memory to create a uh, pitch table uh, so you could literally go back and sit there and program a, a unique pitch table create uh, your own scales weird you know pentatonic modes that that don't fit on a regular piano uh, all kinds of things microtones quarter tones and uh, that would be per patch uh, which is insane uh, like I said if you like to program this machine will keep you occupied um, it's nice that you can do a group edit. So you've got your six voices. You can actually group them together. And if you wanted to work on, say, the LFO settings as a global thing, uh, you would group edit that. Or maybe you wanted to uh, work on uh, one of the filters or the envelopes here. Uh, you'd be able to do that on as a group. So you don't have to go through each wave, each of the six waves, and do it unless you wanted to. Uh, that's a nice feature. Uh, it has... A, it has um, a copy and paste function, uh, which is page sensitive. So if you're on the LFO page and you hit copy, it'll copy the LFO settings and then you pull up the other voice and you paste it onto there. Uh, about the envelopes, they are a little tricky because they're not ADSR. I noticed all the synths I bought in the last few years of all, all the new ones seem to have reverted back to ADSR, uh, which is understandable, you know, when you think about it, uh, because that's you, you can just get too, too deep. And I'm going to do a separate video explaining that because all the Ansonic um, uh, envelopes do have that, especially the like the ASR10, the EPS16+, Plus, uh, this one, the SD1, the VFX, they use the same envelopes. Uh, there are preset envelopes in there, uh, which actually isn't in the programming section in the manual. You have to look up the, the copy section. But it does have preset envelopes, which is a great way uh, to get started. But I'll do a separate video on that. Um, it has a built-in disk drive, and what I will say about it is, uh, on my ASR10, the PS16+, Plus, VFX, uh, SD, and this, so far, touch wood, uh, the, uh, the drives work great. Uh, this drive will actually store SysX 
information from any synth. So you can just hook it up to here, it's MIDI in, and you can store, if you're on a gig and you don't have your computer or whatever, or it crashes, you can store all your patches and sequences on, on these uh, floppies. And uh, as I say, so far it's 30 year old and I've been using it uh, just great. Uh, the cartridges tend to be a bit expensive, uh, if you haven't noticed. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, going on to uh, the next bank, uh, this is uh, a string uh, sound, but it's got a detached setting. And then the rest of the orchestra plays the rest of it. Uh, but not bad, you know, again, it, it's not really an emulation synth. I wouldn't really look to it uh, for string. Uh, I mean, it's got some nice strings, but you, in a pad setting. Uh, but woodwinds, you know, oboe, clarinet, stuff like that, not really. Uh, but that's not really what you, you'd want it for, hopefully. Uh, it's so good uh, out there, all these other things. Uh, we did the Faulty Towers. That's one of the new um, uh, waveforms that comes with this uh, synth. And as soon as I heard it, I just had to play that tune. Uh, hopefully, if you know what that is, you might leave a little comment. Uh, otherwise, people would be wondering uh, what that tune was and why it was faulty in referring to the faulty connection that the uh, VFX was uh, infamous for. Uh, but it's been fixed on this. Super reliable. Uh, it doesn't have the overheating problem. A lot of the VFX SDs, I uh, was in the user group, and Facebook and you'd get comments like, oh, it's acting up, it's acting up. And it would just basically overheat. Uh, the heat sink at the back uh, either wasn't efficient enough or just couldn't get the heat out. So just a little clip on fan tended to uh, solve that problem uh, with the VFX SD. This one, uh, I've, lead, I've had it switched on for a couple of days, uh, using it day and night and hasn't freaked out. Hasn't seized once. Uh, it, the keyboard calibration it does when you power it up, sails right through it, uh, hasn't been a problem, uh, again, touch wood. Uh, so it feels like they really got it right. Uh, so if you can hold out for a little bit more bread, uh, or you get a VFX SD that someone's fixed that connection, uh, or you want to try to do it yourself. I know guys uh, who've uh, uh, been able to just hardwire it, the connection uh, themselves. Uh, the, the SD one really is the way to go. Uh, are we nearly done? Hey, it's got some decent uh, guitar sounds. And this is, I remember when the Yamaha DX7 uh, came out and the jazz guitar on that, everyone was freaking out. This one has a little bit distortion. Uh, this is one of the presets. Something on there, yeah, something along. The There's like amp distortion or something. It's really clever how they got that. See if I can get Yeah. I think it's on the key up. Yeah. So you get that. It's very clever. Uh, I like that effect. Uh, another electric guitar takes advantage. Uh, this is something I put in. Uh, the effects are great because they are touch sensitive. You can assign the modulators uh, and velocity being one of them. Uh, you can program um, real time uh, modulation of the effect. This is, a, this is a little wah, which has been modulated by velocity. slowing that down a bit yeah you get the idea um, distortion guitar Again, uh, useful, 
you know, if 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 you're looking for that kind of sound, um, I don't think it really works as a lead. I've never like, you know, distorted guitar distorted guitar sounds on synths. But you can have a bit of fun with that. Put a scratch track together. Um, I would now like to put a little gallery of the waveforms that uh, come with this. There's twenty, I believe, twenty seven additional waveforms, and I say gallery uh, because I've got some gallery music. Uh, which some of you might recognize. Now, to do to do the gallery music, I have to be able to reach this tenth here with the F sharp in the middle. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, again, if you recognize that, just let me know. Uh, you got the message uh, in a little comment. And uh, yeah, so those are the new uh, waveforms. Uh, again, another thing I like about this is, as you can see with the pitch, I was saying you can microtone and microtune. You can have the pitch track ascending or descending uh, at your whim. So you can put the two together. So I've got a bell patch where as I go up the key, the pitch goes down. But as I go down the key, the pitch goes up, plus the regular way, up, up, down, down, like this. Again, just great for sweetening up tracks, you know, when you want to put something. And just out of curiosity, that was a four voice. Uh, so you could do uh, five, uh, five note chords, but I just do glissandi, you know. And I'm not really getting any note cut off. Uh, so great, great. Uh, the last bank is drums. The other thing that this uh, SD1 does, it has a drum map whereby each key, whoops, got to press the button, each key has its own drum sound. Has some uh, 808 samples in it. Not too many. Uh, again, you can use. Um, uh, I don't want to take you through all the drum sounds. You get the idea. Uh, it's got some of those 90s snares. Uh, again, here's a drum pattern. Uh, where the entry of the notes have been delayed. not careful I'll just sit here for a long time just jamming that but again you can run the sequencer and jam with those drum maps get a groove going that you wouldn't find and then you can just cut out the measures that you like uh, it's very easy to edit on the sequencer that does do MIDI out on the sequencer so you could control your other sense it's not a bad master controller that seems to be a popular question uh, will this will my synth be a good master controller yes this one definitely will uh, very very nice uh, it's got orchestral percussion, not really. I wouldn't come here for the orchestral percussion. Uh, timpani, I believe timpani is one of the new sounds uh, on the uh, SD1. I can confirm that in the in the captions. And there's really only one lick that you can play for the timpani. 
to uh, ascertain its realism. And again, hopefully uh, somebody uh, will know what that is. And uh, Indo would have... So there we are. Uh, it's the SD1. Uh, I'm going to see if I can... Uh, let's just close out with something. Uh, I'm going to put the, the credits on. Thank you.